Every year, people go missing all over the country, and that includes the Fairbanks North Star Borough. That's why Bethany Doudna is here to talk about the launch of the Missing in the North series. Thank you, Alex. It's important not to let these missing people be forgotten. Even if many cases have gone cold for lack of evidence or leads, if we share their stories, share their photos, maybe some of the missing will be found. At the very least, we keep hoping that their families can get some form of closure. Also, if you uh, know anyone in your family or anyone you know has gone missing and you'd like to share their story, please reach out. So let's see the first report. A.V. Keyes was only 19 years old when he told his father that he was going away for a few days. Those days have stretched into decades, and Keyes has not been seen or heard from since. Keyes was raised in Fairbanks, and after dropping out of Lathrop High School, he worked cleaning buses for a tourism business. Court records say that he had an established record of methamphetamine use and an arrest record for assault charges. The day that Key's life changed was May 13, 2004. He and three associates, Jason Fisher, David Mason, and Josiah Thurnow, had, reportedly, been high on a methamphetamine binge for the last three days. They were driving down the Seas Highway when, for no clear reason, Fisher shot Mason twice in the head, killing him. Early in the morning of May 15, Keyes and Fisher were again driving in Fisher's car, with Mason's body still in the trunk when law enforcement attempted to pull them over. Keyes and Fisher took off on a high-speed chase, and while Fisher ran off and successfully evaded law enforcement, Keyes was arrested and charged with driving under the influence. During the time that Fisher's car sat impounded, Keyes was bailed out of jail and court dates were set for him to appear on the DUI charges. Those dates came and went with no sign of Keyes. He was presumed to be hiding from the law. Around the beginning of June, Mason's body was discovered in the impounded car's trunk. In the murder trial that followed, Thurnow ended up testifying as a witness in exchange for immunity, and Fisher pleaded no contest to second-degree murder. After so much time has passed, investigators now say that they suspect foul play in Key's disappearance. They say that most fugitives get in touch with their families to let them know how they are, but Key's family reports they have heard nothing in the past two decades. It is said to be unclear whether Key's disappearance might be linked to Mason's murder. Reporting for News Center Fairbanks, I'm Bethany Doudna.